So what I'm going over is setting up dual deployment with an electronics bay. And in my case, I'm using the Stratologger SL100. You can see green wire coming up and it goes to the top of my electronics bay. And then you see the orange wire and it comes down and it goes out through the bottom of my electronics bay. The orange is my drogue chute. I have my drogue chute below. The reason why the drogue chute on the lower side is good is I always use an ejection charge attached to the engine as a backup in case your electronics for whatever reason fail. So this is the stratologger. You've seen the wires. The last thing that is part of the circuit for the stratologger is your battery supply. In this case, it's a 9-volt battery, and you can tell that I tape it in very securely for uh, flight. This here is a zip tie, further securing that battery down. Now, what's behind this actual uh, white sheet of paper is the second stratologger that I have, and that's for more advanced flight where you want a backup system in case your primary fails. Uh, I'm not discussing that today. I will show it probably later towards the end of the video. So in my actual bulkhead for the, the eBay, I have screws. I've got those secured uh, to the interior of the eBay, and they look very similar to this washer that I have with a nut. You can see an actual wire that I have here. And all I do, let me see if I can get this set up. Okay, so all I do is I slip the wire that's been, uh, I've removed the insulation on the wire there. I wrap it around where the washers are, like that. And then I tighten the nut. And of course, at this point, I would use a screwdriver and uh, uh, pliers uh, to tighten that down further. But basically, that's to secure that wire. And then this would go through the actual housing of the eBay right there. And that's how I secured that in. Okay, so now we're going to go to the other side. So, at this point, ignore the blue wire. That's my redundancy. We're just looking at the orange wires for the drogue chute. And when I flip this over, you can see how it comes through to the other side of the electronics bay. And you can see that I've got several uh, nuts on there. Okay, and of course two washers. I have went ahead and installed a Q2 G2 Quest igniter there just so that you can see how it actually attaches to the outside of the electronic bay bulkhead and uh, of course this would be inserted into an actual pyro and I use these little things that I've made um, to put my FFFFG black powder in these little tubes here that I've made are reusable and what I've done is I've put about a quarter inch of epoxy on the back side and that would face up against the bulkhead like that okay and then on the it's uh, the epoxy is a quarter inch thick so it's hollow you can kind of see back down in there and see how it ends and on my larger pyros that I set off, instead of epoxying both sides, I keep both sides open like this. And I allow it to eject from both sides. And then that way, this part here is reusable. Otherwise, it'll blow up because there's just too much powder in there. What I'm talking about is if I end up using 1.2 grams of black powder, whereas this one will hold up to about 0.7 grams of black powder. What I made these little cardboard things from I was looking around the house to find something that I could use to house my black powder. And I looked in my closet and saw a coat hanger. And of course, I took this thing off, immediately got the Eureka moment, and uh, decided to use that for my cardstock. Um, here's a few more 
Uh, that one I've just wrapped in electrical tape. Um, and then this is just standard uh, plastic tubing. It's half inch plastic tubing. And the nice thing about that tubing is this will slip right onto it. So if you want to have that on your eBay where it's actually held onto the eBay, you just set it like this. And I made a little epoxy riser here on my actual eBay and that snugly fits right onto it like that. So now I can have my ejection charge attached to my eBay like that and it's all nice and tidy. The next part of this task is to find out how much black powder you need for the area of deployment you're going to use. In my case, I go to urock.org and under their resources, you'll see some online tools and I go to black powder calc and they've got a great black powder calculator here and you tell how what the uh, diameter of your uh, parachute section is in inches. In my case, it's four. You tell the length of the parachute section in inches and how much PSI you need. And if you scroll down a little bit, you can find out how to calculate how much PSI you need for the specific diameter rock you have, rocket you have. In my case, it's four inches, which ranges between 10 to 15 PSI. Next, you want to locate FFFFG black powder. And this for me was extremely hard to find. I called all my local pawn shops and gun shops and none of them have it. Uh, I ended up having to drive for 30 miles to a gun shop in another town in order to gain some of this. Typically, this black powder is used for Civil War reloads. Okay. Uh, when you're calculating your black powder, you will notice that they're telling you to calculate it in grams. Well, I don't have a gram scale, but if you look it up, you'll find that 0.95 grams is equivalent to one cc or one milliliter. So what I found is uh, one of my daughter's medicine uh, measures, and I cut it so that it's exactly at two cc's okay and I put a toothpick in the bottom of it to plug up the bottom and I've used this quite a bit to actually measure my black powder it seems to work very well I like to err on the side of caution so the fact that it's 0.95 slightly less black powder than what's what's calculated is fine I then test all this of course on the ground to ensure that my deployment is successful. Okay, so what I got here is two Quest Q2 G2 igniters. What's nice about them is they are insulated, so even if they end up touching together like this, they are not going to ground themselves out. I use two for redundancy, especially on a dual deployment eBay without redundancy. If you don't have two computers, well, this is at least a little bit of redundancy, so if one igniter fails, you have a backup igniter. And what I usually do is stagger these slightly in the actual uh, charge so that they aren't in the exact same location. I don't want any chance of a ground out. That kind of stops that. So here I've got my black powder measured and this one is measured at 0.4 uh, milliliters. So we're looking at just under uh, 0.4 grams of black powder and that's what's going to deploy the nose cone on my 4 inch diameter rocket and the actual uh, section is 4 inches long so I'm looking at about 15 psi so at this point I'm going to pour half of this powder into here plant the igniters slightly stagger them and then fill it up the rest of the way. I will then use I then use Quest recovery wadding in order to fill in the airspace that's at the top of that and then I masking tape the top over. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and fill this now 
and we'll go from there. I've put the igniters in, one igniters over here and one igniters over here. Now you want these pretty much in the center of the charge, but again, I stagger them a little bit because I don't want them to go off in the exact same location. I don't want any chance of grounding. I'm now going to put the wadding in. Guys, I just want to say this. Make sure that when you're using black powder that you don't need, use it near an open flame or do anything crazy with it because it's extremely explosive. So I'm tearing one of the sheets of the uh, Quest Recovery wadding and I kind of like to tear it into quarters like this. And I take one of the quarters and I ball it up. And I'm going to just jam it down in here. I'm going to take my, where's my little tool? There it is. You don't want it super tight, but obviously you don't want your powder moving around either. Okay, so keep in mind this is one of the igniters, this is the other igniter. I'm going to add just a little, it looks like it just needs a little bit more, so I'll tear one of these in half. Bunch that up. There we go, that's pretty much done. Now I'm going to take a piece of masking tape and cover that up. You want to always track your two separate igniters because you don't want to tie the same one to itself on one of the charges. This is one igniter, this is the other igniter. Okay. Now that I've got one piece of tape covering the top, I want to make sure that I secure it in place. So I'm going to wrap this around the whole thing right here. So when the ejection charge goes off, it's easily going to go through this ejection cap that has the wadding in there, okay, and your ejection charge is going to come out here. So if this was up against the bulkhead, your ejection card charge is going to explode this way. Now I've got two uh, igniters and these are the two leads for one igniter. These are the two leads for the another igniter. Now I pull these together like this and I wire them together. I then take these two igniters, the ends, and I do the same thing. So one of the terminals goes here, the other terminal goes here. Let me bring my eBay over. So those two electrical lines, one would connect to this one and the other one would connect here. Now in my case, the line is not quite long enough. So what I'll do is I'll get cheap Cat5e cable from Home Depot. And in this case, I got uh, 15 feet of patch cable and I'll remove the outer housing so that I can get at the interior wires which look pretty much like this and I'll take one of them and I'll cut it to the size I need with my wire cutters and I'll strip it so that it's got some exposed area and wrap those on the end.